Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're continuing to make a character portrait window. We're going to add some character stats to our window. Let's get started. Alright, so here's the scene from the previous videos. We can click on a character and it spawns a window, click on another and it spawns another window, and I can close them. Okay, right. So, right now it is only displaying the portrait of my character. Let's also display some stats. Now the first thing we need to change is instead of receiving a transform to follow, let's follow a character object. So in our code on the window character portrait, in here on the show static, instead of receiving the transform, let's receive a character, character, character. On our dictionary, we're no longer working with transforms, but rather with a character. Let's make a private character for our character that we're following. On the window dictionary down here, let's create a new character as a dictionary, add test for the key of this character, show with this character, and set this. Now on our show, instead of taking a transform, let's get a character, character. Follow transform will be the character dot transform. All right, so we have replaced the transform with a character. So this script now receives a specific character object. This is what we're going to use to grab the stats to display in our window. So now that our class is working with characters instead of transforms, let's go into the game handler. And here, instead of showing using the character transform, we're going to use the characters. I have a function down here setting up these two characters. So on the first one, let's send this one. On the second one, let's send this one. All right, let's test. Now everything should be working exactly the same. Okay, there it is. My two characters are moving the same. I click and it shows everything's exactly the same. Great. Now, obviously, the difference is that internally, this window no longer has just a reference to this transform, but to the character object itself. So let's take a look at that character object and see what information it contains. So this is the character object. As you can see, it has some member variables and some generic functionality. It has some events in here. It has a reference to the transform. It has a name, a level, and some stats. On our constructor, we are simply initializing random values to our stats and creating a function periodic, which is adding experience every 25 milliseconds. When we add experience, if we have enough, we increase the level, which increases the stats randomly. So this class is simply representing a very generic character that you would use in your game. All right, so now let's set up the window to display our stats. Back in our editor, let's grab our prefab and let's set it up with various text fields. All right, so our window is now set up. Let's go into our code. So since we changed the show static to use characters instead of transforms, we can access the stats from that character. On our show function in here, I can go transform.find the name text, get component, type text, and set that text to the character.name. All right, let's see if the name is correctly showing up. Okay, here I am, I click this character, and as you can see, this character's name is Neo, and this one in here is named Leonidas. Okay, so let's set up the rest of our stats. So, since the name never changes, we can only set it in the show, but the other values do change, so let's set them on our update. In order to keep our game performant, let's grab the references to our text object in our awake instead of doing find and get component on every update. So, let's make some member variables for the text objects. Let's grab the references on our awake, so. Okay, I have all my references, now let's set them up on our update. So the level text dot text is going to be my character dot level dot to string. 
Do the same thing for all the other stats. And for my experience bar, I have set it up so that I can modify the local scale, which is a vector three that receives something than one and one. And for the X, I'm going to need a normalized value, which the character has. It has a function called get experience normalized, which gets the experience as a value between zero and one, which then modifies the scale between zero and one. All right, so let's test and see if our values are being updated for each of our characters. All right, so here's my characters, and when I click on it, there's the window, and it's correctly updating. As you can see, it shows the name, shows the level, the experience bar is updating. As it increases, it increases the level, it increases one of the stats. And I can still close and reopen it, and it all works perfectly fine. All right, so now this works, but if your game is heavily dependent on performance, it would be wasteful to update on every frame. The class is firing some events when the character levels up and when he gains experience. So let's use that to update our values. Let's comment out this code on our update since we're going to do this another way. So let's first make some functions to update our values. So a private void update experience bar and a private void update stats. And let's copy this code in here. Okay, so on our show, let's call both of these all that one and the update stats. So let's subscribe to the character dot on experience gained event. It is a basic event, so it gets an object sender and event args e. On experience gained, we simply want to update our experience bar. And on the other event, on level up, On this event, we want to update the experience bar and also update our stats. All right, so now the only thing we're doing on update is setting the camera transform, since that does change every single update. And on our show, we're subscribing to the events and only updating our values when they actually change. So let's see how it's working. And yep, there you go. I can see the character, I can see the stats, I can see the window, and everything is increasing and updating exactly as it should, but now it is much more performant. So there you have it. We have had the ability to display character stats on our window alongside our portrait camera. So the main camera can be elsewhere in your game and you can still view the character and its stats. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.